give you something new to think about. I've taught management and I've also taught technology and we're starting to see the lines blur between those two. Management 4.0 in a digital age. We're now in an age where we have robotics, artificial intelligence, technology like blockchain, all of these different things that are normal in business, in management. And so it bears the question then, how does management change in the digital age? Or an even better question, is management even necessary in a digital age? Why do we call it Management 4.0, what is new about today than is different from before? We're rapidly reaching a point where human performance is being outrun by computer performance. We're starting to see the ability of computers to do things that were only able to do by humans before. So we've called it the fourth industrial revolution that now we have computers who are beginning to mimic the things that we could do, including management. For many of our young folks in the room, the digital millennials, we call them, the digital natives, for all of you, this is not new. This is not a revolution at all. This is something that's been normal since you were born. You've never known anything but a smartphone a TV that you could look at that could do wonderful things, an entirely fast internet. This is not a revolution at all. But the world you're going to step into may be different. And it may challenge the notion of management as we bring together not just the digital world, but the physical world. To do things that we all see are happening now, that we can talk and have a device in our home understand us and do things on our behalf. The digital and the physical world merging is really what the fourth industrial revolution is all about. But before we go to the fourth industrial revolution, why is it different? How did we get there? We've had four revolutions, the first one beginning in the 17 to 1800s, and it was all about steam. It may not seem significant to all of you, but at the time, this was really important. It liberated human beings from the power of animals. That we had to have horses and cows and those things do those things for us before. Now we had machines. We could go farther. We could go faster. We could do things and go places we could never think about before. The first revolution was extremely significant and created new industries like the locomotive. The second revolution was all about electricity. Again, something we take for granted now. We didn't have that then. It did then allow us to do things we couldn't before, particularly in management. We could do what's called processes, a word that really wasn't used much then and is entirely familiar to a management student now. That we could begin to create factories and do things on an assembly line through the enablement of electricity that moves things on our behalf not just with expensive steam power, but cheaper electricity. And then we reached the third revolution, happening in the 1960s to 70s to 80s. We finally had the microchip. We finally had the computer that now could do things faster, that could actually do calculations and do different types of activities in the management world that traditionally we had to do manually as, as human beings. This enabled us to do things now that we couldn't before, computer systems and networking, the things which you're familiar with are all powered with this microchip. This is so significant in the third revolution. And then we reached the fourth revolution, the fourth industrial revolution, which we're all in the midst of right now. Here in Korea, we have the highest density of robots in factories in the entire world. And we're starting to see the fourth industrial revolution bringing together that physical and digital world, but adding something on top of it, intelligence. Bringing together the things that we know in our learning, in our practice, in our brains, and transferring that to computers to do on our behalf. And it causes really some significant changes potentially in the world of management. But going back to the original question, is management even necessary in this fourth industrial revolution? Let's take a look. 
we're familiar with accounting and finance. It's one of the basics of the management field. Accounting and finance, in a very simple terms, gives us the rules which we know how to do business and organizations by. We know how to count things. We know how to keep score. We're now seeing the basis of that change in a dramatic way. Because accounting has been around for hundreds, if not thousands of years. We enter calculations and numbers in a book. We make sure they add up. But it takes humans to do that. It takes humans to look at that and make sure it's right. It takes humans to then make sure that those numbers are then useful for something else. Accounting and finance has changed because now we see the ability for us to use these numbers not just after the fact, not just later when they've been verified, not just later when we can trust them. We can actually use those numbers as they fly around in light speed around the world. We have technology now, like blockchain, these other technology words we hear about, that actually add trust to the numbers that typically would only be uh, done by human beings. We can now have a transaction be trusted when it initiates. When you use your phone to buy something, immediately that information can be trusted all the way around the world when we want to order something new. You bought one, we need to produce one more. We don't have to wait for the numbers to add up. Accounting has become extremely digital. Accounting has become now digitized in a way that becomes, in some ways, the new oil of the organization. And now accounting and finance is changing in the fourth industrial revolution. But just as we had mentioned, is management necessary in this world? We talk about the need to have the rules. We talk about the need to keep score. When we're able to not use human power to verify things, but use it for decision making, we now can make organizations move faster. We can actually do things we couldn't before. So we've transferred the manual part of what we've done to the computer and added intelligence to now free us, just as steam had freed us from animal power, we're now freed from computer power to actually make better decisions. Another concept we're very familiar with in management is operations. It's the fundamental part of what we do. Operations really is that whole heartbeat of an organization, bringing in goods, processing them, ordering, sending them out, that whole inertia of business, which now we're seeing is done oftentimes by robots and intelligence, artificial intelligence, things that now we delegate human tasks to on a very regular basis. So you would ask then, what is the role of a manager now? What is the role of a manager in a factory full of robots that we don't have to tell what to do, that they know what to do already? It's all about what I call orchestration. We've seen this, for those of you who have seen Fantasia, the animation classic from Disney, and Mickey is in there orchestrating all these inanimate objects to do something on his behalf. In many ways, we're doing the same thing. Managers in the fourth industrial revolution don't become organizers, they become orchestrators, bringing together all these things to do fast and efficient things, and we do it better because we're able to use our knowledge of management in order to, to do that. Another fundamental piece of management is marketing. We learn this in business school. It's fundamental to what we do in order to enable businesses to sell products. We often talk about the four Ps, right? Product, price, placement, promotion. Those things where you're supposed to be in a place and I can influence you to buy something through price or through a promotion. All of those different types of things what we're seeing in the fourth industrial revolution is now that's changing dramatically. It's not about where you are to the product, it's where the product is to you. And oftentimes it's in places we didn't envision. It could be your home. We now have products in the fourth industrial revolution in the digital world, a mirror that can actually see you and talk to you, that can evaluate your skin, it can see how healthy you are today versus yesterday. 
It can start to recommend products to you based on a whole range of features and you haven't said a word. The fourth industrial revolution, when we bring these digital and physical worlds together and now change the notion of marketing, because now marketing is insightful. Marketing is pervasive. Marketing is everywhere and it's not interruptive. It's actually very instructional. And we're able to do the things we could not do, even the things we didn't know we wanted. They're able to actually sense the things that we like based upon our conversations and how we look and the way we act and provide products that would fit our lives maybe that we didn't anticipate. And we're also very familiar with human resources. It's interesting because if we look at this field, there's one term, one word that stands out, human. We've always known management and organizations as just that, humans. So we've orchestrated a whole discipline of management around this field. How do we motivate you? How do we hire the best employees? How do we actually look at the uh, nonverbal aspects of a, an employee before we hire them and know that they're the right one? But there's also something fundamentally challenging about humans in human resources. We're naturally biased. We naturally like certain things, not like certain things. We're influenced by the friends we have, the countries we come from. It's not bad, it's different. And so we're looking now in management in the fourth industrial revolution as not being replaced by a computer, being replaced by artificial intelligence, but being augmented by it. And help us do things better than maybe we could do ourselves to potentially take away the bias, for example, to evaluate somebody and be able to look at their verbal and nonverbal skills and be able to tell that this person may have those, non, those, those qualities that we are looking for that maybe we couldn't see ourselves and give us a better chance of finding the right hire the first time. And in management, there's strategy. Computers now, and we've seen this from computers who are able to beat the best game players at Go, at Jeopardy, all these things which traditionally have been purely a human exercise, games and strategy, that now we're able to use the fields of artificial intelligence to help us create strategy and do things maybe better than a human. But the question then becomes, if a computer can beat us at our own games, can it do strategy too? And the answer is, kind of, maybe. But think about your own lives. How do you make a decision to buy something simple, such as a new smartphone? There's product, there's price, there's place, there's promotion, those, those things that are very standard. But there's also those other things. How does it look? How does it feel? How do you describe that? And oh, by the way, you had a, f a conversation with your friend last week, and they told you about this, this phone. And you read something else. And maybe you saw somebody talking on this phone, on the bus, on your way to school. And you thought, wow, that looks interesting. There's all these things which enter into our heads in decision making that sometimes we can't describe. Strategy still is a human endeavor. Strategy still requires a lot of complex thinking in order for us to make a decision. We can use artificial intelligence to help us. And in some places, it's doing better than us. But so far, we've never found a computer that can think better than us. And this is the world of strategy that managers in the fourth industrial revolution will live in. So then we get to leadership. Probably the most fundamental part of management that we can look at a person in our organization. We can motivate them. We can understand what their career paths are. In many ways, leadership is about trust. Trust in them, looking at you as a leader, for you to trust them. If we look at this picture, this seems like a very trustworthy individual. This is actually the world's first 24-hour artificial intelligence newscaster. It debuted two weeks ago in China. This could be your new coworker. This could be your new boss. 
This is the world that we'll live in in the fourth industrial revolution as we learn how to lead not just humans, but things. Things that act like humans, things that think like humans, things that help us. But it's interesting as we look into the face of this artificial intelligence, it does give us the feeling that we're looking into a human being. And so it challenges, the, challenges us, could we ever trust them? If they gave us decisions, if they gave us things to do, would we trust them? Would we see them as a leader? Or will it always be humans as a leader? So we've reached then a really interesting inflection point. We've seen that in many cases, management is not dead. Management is entirely necessary to this new world that we're walking into, this digital and physical world combined, that we have robotics and intelligence, all these things to help us and make us better and make our organizations better. But we need to actually be great managers too, great leaders too, great strategists, et cetera. And so as we think about the learning of management, it means that we know, need to know the fundamentals, that those have not changed. We will just apply it to a new world. And to me, I think that's probably the most fundamental takeaway, that we will not do different things, but we will do things differently. Thank you very much.